If you've never heard of the word myopia, we don't blame you. This is a term that means short-sightedness. And you probably didn't know that myopia is a condition that can lead to permanent vision impairment or blindness. It's a condition which unfortunately, due, we think largely to the excessive elongation of the eye, that can lead to uh, difficulties later in life uh, with eye conditions at uh, the back of the eye, such as uh, myopic macular degeneration, which um, unfortunately can uh, lead to visual impairment. You as a patient may be perhaps reliant on glasses or contact lenses, but really that's only a temporary measure to allow you to see clearly. Wearing glasses is not curing myopia, it's just relieving the symptoms. Myopia is a major issue because increasing levels of myopia increases the risk of cataract by five times, it increases the risk of glaucoma by three times, it increases the risk of retinal detachment over 20 times, and it increases the risk of myopic macular degeneration by 40 times. For somebody who is normally sighted, the length of their eye is about 22 to 24 millimetres, and that's a lot smaller than what most people think it is. But in myopia or short-sightedness, the eyeball stretches, it goes, grows too quickly. And when it stretches, we have higher risk of eye diseases that occur from this stretching. As myopia progresses or gets worse, the eyeball gets longer and longer, and the retina at the back of the eye is under more and more pressure. Patients with high myopia are much more prone to developing a variety of retinal conditions. The most common of those is, would be a retinal detachment. A retinal detachment is a condition in which the retina, which is the layer of nerves that lines the back of the eye, separates from the wall of the eye. Now, the basic reason this happens is because in people who are short-sighted, the basic problem is that their eye is longer than average. And when your eyeball is longer than average, the internal surface area of the eye is larger. As we get older, the retina becomes thinner. And if you get a hole in the retina, what can happen is fluid from inside the eye can pass through the hole, get underneath your retina and lift it off the wall of the eye. And that's called a retinal detachment. With myopia, your, the eyeball is longer than average. And so the internal surface area of the eye is larger and the retina is stretched over a larger area. And it's thinner. And so the macula is thinner. And so it's like it's prematurely aged, essentially. And they get a form of macular degeneration, which happens at a much younger age. And that's not due to age, but that's due to the uh, pathological processes involved in myopia. In the past, we understood myopia as primarily being a genetic condition. But over the past 10, 20 years, and especially over the past decade, it's been moving far too quickly and increasing incidence to just be genetic. We know that visual environment plays an enormous role in development of childhood myopia and what we also know is that educational pressures so the east asian educational pressure is something that is definitely associated with increasing rates of myopia compared to other schooling systems so while genetics might load the gun the visual environment is the thing that's an enormous risk for our children and it's something that we should be providing advice on to all of the kids we see and absolutely to children at risk What we can do now as eye care practitioners is manage the myopia so that we can slow the myopia from increasing to levels which can cause damage. This is called myopia control. There's been research on particular types of spectacle lenses. So spectacle lenses that have different focuses in them, multifocal or bifocal spectacle lenses. There's research in multifocal contact lenses. So these are lenses that have different zones of focus in them that change the focus demand for the eye when they're reading or change the focus demand for peripheral vision compared to central vision. And there's even eye drops which have been shown to slow down that progression of short-sightedness. Higher levels of myopia, above five to six diopters, which means that someone can't see clearly past about 20 centimetres, that has higher risks. And it's because the eyeball has stretched so much that there are higher risks. So we might take a more aggressive treatment strategy. We might need to be really active, applying all of these treatments or combinations of treatments to try and slow down or stop that worsening and to try and stop the eye growing and stretching too much. There is so much research that shows much better ways to help correct and control the progression of myopia in children, especially the younger ones who start earlier. And research has shown that the earlier you start with myopia control options, the better chance they've got at slowing it down so it doesn't turn out to be a much higher prescription when they grow up. When we see a myopic child, we do offer various 
treatment options. They include atropine eye drops, orthokeratology lenses, multifocal soft contact lenses, as well as multifocal spectacles. Over the past 10 years, we've started to understand more about contact lens options. And there's a contact lens you wear overnight and take off in the morning called OrthoK, which has shown lots of strong research results for myopia control. And we have increasing soft lens options as well. We have seen quite promising effects of orthokeratology on myopia control. Benefits of orthokeratology include improved self-perception and self-esteem in children as they don't need to wear spectacle lenses throughout the day. Furthermore, there are benefits in activities such as outdoor activities or sporting activities uh, without having to use any optical corrections. The process around the treatment of orthokeratology is that the patient wears a contact lens at night time. It's a very custom designed contact lens and it's designed to correct for someone's level of short-sightedness. As they wear the contact lens at night time, it corrects for the short-sightedness and when they wake up the next day, they remove the contact lens and they enjoy perfect vision without spectacles or without contact lenses. And my patients enjoy it because of a number of reasons. The first reason is that they really feel a sense of ownership over doing something proactive to control their level of myopia. The second reason is that there is a huge increase in their quality of life by being spectacles free. They are certainly very effective at slowing it down and kids love it. They don't have to wear glasses during the day. It's great for sport, great for swimming, so it's, it's certainly an option for those kids who are very active and spend a lot of time outdoors. It's important that we ensure that children get eye exams very early, preferably before they even enter school. What this will ensure is that if children are myopic, they can be treated early and myopia control implemented. As a result, they will be prevented from developing the eye myopia and having problems in later life. <laughs> hard thing for parents to accept often is it's actually quite difficult to pick up when a child isn't seeing at the normal level. I mean if a child has very poor vision you'll pick that up very quickly but these uh, changes that occur with myopia are often initially quite subtle. I would actually always recommend that children have an eye check as a preschooler and then again somewhere in uh, middle schooling and probably before they start high school. It wouldn't be if a child is diagnosed with myopia, the optometrist should communicate to the parent the issues around myopia, that as it progresses and it's likely to progress or get worse in children, that this can indicate higher risks of lifelong eye disease and so the why of why we need to do something about it, why we don't want to sit back and just watch their prescription get worse and worse. So what the parents should expect is information about the different sorts of treatments that are available for children, that we don't just give them a straight pair of glasses to correct their vision for long distance because that can influence how their eyes work up close. We need to look at how their eyes work up close and we need to talk about options like contact lenses and like eye drops that can help to slow down this worsening of short-sightedness. And I speak to parents and tell them this. I know that you think if your child needs glasses for distance, it just means they need to wear glasses. And if they need glasses, it might, might mean that the lenses will need to be thinner and stronger when they get older. But when I look at your child, I don't see a child that needs glasses. I see a child that has a risk factor of up to 17 times greater as they grow older for developing a retinal detachment. And we know that a retinal detachment is the number one cause for unilateral, like one eye going blind in young adults. I don't want that for your child. The really key message here is that we don't have to sit back and watch our children's vision get worse and worse and worse every year. There's things we can do about it. There's special types of spectacle lenses, contact lenses and eye drops that can help to slow down or if we're very lucky even stop the progression of short-sightedness.